Hey, there you are. Great. I was waiting for you. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is 6722. It is a Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Top. And what I do here is I like to share my due diligence on OTC and penny stocks, stocks that catch my attention or stocks that are catching other investors' attention, or maybe even a stock that isn't catching anybody's attention is just simply under the radar. Now, I've got a few stocks today that were strong on the charts, kept some impressive gains, but to look at the catalyst, the news that came out today for them, not so impressive. You would be surprised to see what actually made them move. And if it made these stocks move, then it can make other stocks move when this happens again. So we can definitely learn from this. So let's go see what I've got. Whoa, all right, we have landed over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do due diligence on an OTC stock. It's simple because it's never outdated. Think about that, never having to do searches for current information. Why? Because OTC Markets is updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA. Boy, does that make things easy. First stock we are going to take a look at here is King Resources, KRFG is their ticker. Finished the day at 0013, 23% gains. Pink and Current has a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Look for these green ticks. You do want to see them. And they are a reported shell company. That means they've got no business yet. They actually don't have any business. They don't have any products, just don't have any business. So they have no money to report. And shell companies, okay. You're looking for shell companies because they're the ones that want to make reverse mergers. They want to make deals because somebody in a private company wants to go public. And this is a lot quicker and easier than an IPO. So they just jump in here. And this is exactly what has got this company moving today. Now there was no news, but there were two filings that indirectly talked about them being a shell company, or more to the point, not a shell company. So what was the relative volume around this company, being that it wasn't exactly out there for everyone to see? <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't too obscure, was it? They normally do 2.3 million shares a day. Today they did 52 million. I don't know, what is that, 40, 45 times her normal share count. So yeah, I guess people figured it out just like I did. What is the share structure on this company? Oh, that's a lot. We got just under a billion shares. Go to the unrestricted. That's normally going to be as close to the float as you're going to get. 995 million. It's huge. Financials, nothing because they're a shell company. So we're not going to see anything there. And before I go to the disclosures, which is really what I need to show you, I just want you to see there is no news on this company. Absolutely has nothing here to look at. So at the top, we've got their financial disclosures, which we know are all current because they're pink current, right? Then we've got their SEC filings. And this is where you can find a lot of other juicy tidbits of information. Every filing has a purpose. I like to normally look for 8Ks. But anything that comes out the same day I'm looking at it, I look at just to find out what's going on. And these two here, I wasn't too familiar with. Basically, these are filings of share ownership, priority share ownership, the insiders, who owns what, and they got two of them. Silver Bloom Properties here owns 2.1 billion shares, and then this one here, uh, this is Fu Hua, this is an actual person, he owns 708 million shares. Now that's not what I was interested in showing you, I'm just telling you what the form's for. It was down here and all this extra information they said something right here folks right there it tells us prior to the share exchange the company was considered a shell company due to the nominal assets and limited operations as a result of our acquisition of power tech which is what this is all about here the company entered into the smart power supply business so they're telling you in an indirect fashion without filing it yet or putting it out in a press release, we're not a shell company anymore. We have a business. We are in the smart power supply business and the name of our company is PowerTech. So we're probably going to get press releases telling us of the acquisition, probably a name change, ticker change, what their business is, what they're going to do, if it's a product, if it's gas, whatever. But this is the start. And as obscure as this was, 
I think a lot of people saw it. You think so? Let's go take a look at that chart and see how much she was up before she ended up where she ended. I do all of my charting with my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this just for signing up for a free account over at TD Ameritrade. No, I'm not advertising for them. I'm just telling you where I got it. You can do it too. Just sign up for their free account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this just like I do. So we are looking at KRFG, six month, four hour chart. Got a high bubble in this corner. This is just over two cents and a low bubble down here of triple zero nine. That is a huge gulf between the two of them. She has been under the 200 most of this time and the volume right now is incredible. Compared to the volume previously, that is incredible. She has been working up to the MACD for a very long time here and has just now gotten above it. That is a good sign of strength. She's also on top of the 50 on the four hour. Technicals look strong on the four hour, absolutely do. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she was underneath the 50. She hit a low bubble here, which provoked her enough to give her enough nitro to get up on top of that 50. She rode up on the 50 for a few days, fell down to the 200, and today she bounced. Now it looks like the information may have been released in the middle of the day because that's when our surge came into play. And she really jumped, didn't she? She got all the way up here to double zero two one. And she was all the way down here at double zero one. So that's over a hundred percent jump right there in one hour. But boy, she gave a lot of it away. But she's right on the two hundred, which is a fantastic place to settle if you just jump from the fifty. Nice landing. Technicals are starting to show some pullback, but you can see why. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So she was just right on the 50, on it, under it, near it. She wasn't going anywhere until today. Maybe that filing came out earlier than I think. She took off here at, uh, oh, okay, that's 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock in the morning, she decided to take off that from yesterday. It sure is. So it wasn't until 11 o'clock in the morning this surge started. And it did get all the way up here at, well, 30 minutes later. 30 minutes later, she had gone 100% and then fell back. And I don't think she kept 50%. If I draw a line at the top and the bottom of the surge and then split it in the middle, you can do it mathematically or you can eyeball it and just get a close proximity. She is underneath the halfway point. Now I draw that because when you have a strong surge, I expect it to hold 50%. Or in other words, I expect to throw away 50%. Absolutely do. Unless you're in it for a day trade. You get in this and it rises, yeah, get out up here. How do you know where up here is? Well, as soon as it starts to fall, take your gains. Don't get greedy. You know you've gotten that much. Take it. But she comes down to here and holds it, stops right here. I don't care on top, underneath, just stay in this vicinity. Chances are she will continue on or at least stay there. But if you come below it like she has now, you will find the next strongest SMA and pounce on it. And if it's really weak, she's just going to keep falling and falling. So I hate to see her go under the halfway point because normally it's a definite sign of weakness. And as you can see, all the technicals are falling away right now. She looks like she wants to continue to fall. I wouldn't even hope for a bounce on this 20. I think she's gonna at least come down to the 50, which is what she's most accustomed to. Now, do I think she's gonna continue running? Not until she gets a press release. That was interesting news. She's not a shell company. She's made a deal with this power tech and now she's got a business. The more we know, the more it's going to grow. We'll start investing in it when they start telling us more. So keep your eye out for some news presses for KRFG. The next stock we're going to take a look at that was moving curiously today is Energy Focus Inc., ticker EFOI. Now this is on the NASDAQ. It is a penny stock at $2.28. Any stock under $5 is a penny stock doesn't matter where it's sold it is a penny stock this one did over 46 percent gains today now there was no news out today there were no filings today there was a news press on june 3rd and there was a filing yesterday and both were about the same thing but the stock took off today 
and I do think I understand why. And I'm going to share that with you here. So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, she normally does 4.2 million shares. Today she did almost 20 million shares, about five times as much. So people were paying attention. Ooh, share count is nice. We don't know exactly what the float is, but I do know it's less than 6.4 million. So however you slice it, it is a low float. Anything under 10 million, you should take seriously as a super duper low float. So this is incredible. Finances, what do we got going on here? Okay, 18 million, 12 million, 16 million, 9 million. So they are falling in income. I know it's millions. We got three zeros right there. You gotta put those behind the back there. But look how much they're spending for that money. They had spent 8.1 million, they got to keep 1.6 million. And if we look at the quarterlies, yeah, they do have one out for March. Oh, not so good. They did $2 million, but it cost them a little over that. So they actually lost $26,000 this last uh, quarter. Not that $26,000 is a ton of money, but it's going backwards. That's the problem. Now, as I said, there was a disclosure that came out today right there not today yesterday this was an 8k i love 8ks 8ks are like easter eggs with prizes inside you never know what you're gonna find until you crack that bad boy open could be a reverse merger or an acquisition it could be just letting go of management or bringing somebody in you never really know what it is but there could be a real goodie in there now this also came out as a news press which is just a little easier to read so we're going to take a look at that this came out June 3rd, as I said, and it reads, Energy Focus Inc., a leader in sustainable energy, efficient lighting and control systems and ultraviolet light disinfection products for the commercial, military, maritime, and consumer markets, today announced that it has entered into a definitive securities purchase agreement with certain institutional investors to purchase up to 2.6 million shares of common stock in combination with one warrant. So they'll buy a share of stock and they'll buy a warrant. They come together and they're going to pay $1.30 for that. The warrant's going to entitle them to buy a share of stock anytime they want in the next five years at $1.30. But it probably has to cross a line, like say it has to hit $2.50. Once it hits $2.50, bang. Now you can use them anytime you want. You can buy a share for $1.30. So if you want to hold it for four years when the stock is $25, then you can buy a share for $1.30 when it's going for $25. And then you can turn around and sell that $1.30 share for $25 and get all that profit. That's why people like warrants. So why did the stock run today? Because this deal that they just talked about, this buying of the 2.6 million shares of common stock, the closing of that private placement is expected to occur on or about June 7th. Today, folks, subject to the satisfaction of customary closing conditions. What I am presuming happened is they started buying those shares, 2.6 million of them, and got the price moving up. And when people saw the volume, they jumped on the bandwagon, didn't they? So this thing took off. Now, I'm a little curious, though, because I do see these sort of things before. And the companies will say, buy the shares at $1.50. But the current price is $0.85. Cents. Well, that's what excites everybody. You see somebody else is willing to pay buck fifty for a share that's going for $0.85. Cents. First thing that happens is the price runs right up to a buck forty-nine. That's right. It'll stop a penny just before a buck fifty. It just won't go over it. Well, in this case, the stock was already over a dollar thirty, and it's far over a dollar thirty right now. So I'm a little confused. In any case, let's go take a look at the chart and see what it does show. EFOI, Standard Operating Procedure, six-month, four-hour chart. We got an impressive high bubble here of $6.12 and a low here about a month ago of $0.76. Cents, and right now we're at $2.28. She's been under the 200 the entire time except this wild surge right there. She jumped from $1.95 all the way up to that $6.12. That's about 300% gains right there. I'm not too sure what happened here. Little DD will tell you. But 
it all fell away, fell hard. Until here, she's now gotten back above that 200, which is virtually level because so little has been going on with this stock. But here on June 1st, yeah, June 1st, I haven't got a clue what happened, but look at that volume. There was no volume to talk about beforehand. So something happened June 1st, got it out of this knot, this big rope of SMAs that are all bound together, lurched on top of the 50, smashed through the 200, and pretty much landed on it. Uh, the second, nothing happened. This is the third, the news day, the news that we read, tripled the volume here, kicked the price up another 60%. Then you have yesterday, which the filing came out. Not a whole lot of activity for the filing. Sideways pre-market, aftermarket, and then today. Launching like a rocket. And look at those technicals on the four hour, folks. That is ripping. That is just on fire. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. So she was all knotted up here. You can see there's not anything going on. There is that volume busting in. And that is a 100% gain right there, folks. This is a 60% gain. And that right there is a 120% gain. So this thing is ripping. It is actually ripping on this news. Let's come on down to the five day, five minute. And by the way, the technicals are still on fire. Goodness gracious, yes. This has really got a lot of excitement behind it. I gotta say that. Okay, so the last five days, she has been slowly increasing in strength, showing some pops here and there, but today she really took off. And look, I didn't realize that was after market. <laughs> Should have made this video faster, shouldn't I? Yeah, here's where the bell ended the day. She fell, hit her 250, I guess you could call it the 200 haul, which is a lot like your 200 day SMA, which just takes 200 days, averages them together. Voila, you've got a point on the chart. But the 200 haul does the same thing, but then it gives a little more credence to prices current. So the line is normally a little closer to the price. So she got right down here to about 220 and launched to $3.65. Oh my gosh, folks. That is 35, 40% gains right there after market. So do I think she's going to continue running? Well, chart sure looks like it, doesn't it? Um, there's not a whole lot to be said. You know, they've told us that you have an investor that's buying shares and buying warrants. And understand this, folks. For every share they bought, 2.6 million, they bought one warrant as well. Those warrants are going to be cashed in for shares, which means that's another 2.6 million shares that will be thrown onto the outstanding share count. That's the thing about warrants. Once they're cashed in, they dilute the share count. So yeah, it's a good thing right now, but down the road there will be some dilution if you consider 2.6 million a big dilution. But that's what I think has got this running. I think they started buying their shares of stock. Now, maybe this is all investors here, and that's them buying their stock. I don't know. I honestly haven't got a clue. They may not have even done it today. They said on or about. So, I mean, really, they could be doing it tomorrow. I have no clue. You can actually do some deeper DD and see where the purchases came from if you're really curious about it. I'm not going to go there, but it can be done. All right, let's go take a look at another curious mover. Now, this actually is an interesting stock. We don't normally get to see stocks like this, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. This is Zhangmin Education, a Chinese education company that teaches kids from kindergarten to 12th grade online. But as I said, they're a Chinese company. However, they do have an office right here in the United States. Their ticker, Z-M-E-N-Y. They finished today at 40 cents with almost 33% gains. Now, they're on the pink tier and they're current, but that's a new thing for them. Fact of the matter is, this company just got demoted, delisted, actually. They were on the New York Stock Exchange and got kicked off. They sure did. And I saw this at a much higher increase earlier today, which is what caught my attention to it. You got a stock that was delisted 
throwing down to the OTC, and now all of a sudden, I think I saw it at 50, 52 percent gains when I looked at it, and it's like it's already up 52 percent after being delisted. That's a little interesting. Now, they are under a dollar, and any stock under a dollar for too long is in jeopardy on any of the major exchanges, but that's not why they got kicked off. I'll show you why they got kicked off here in just a minute. So what was the relative volume around this company? EGADS. <laughs> not much. Holy cow. 48,000 shares is what she normally sells each day. That's right, thousands. There's no zeros to bring down here. And today she did 120,000, a little over twice her normal share count. And it's not very big. But that is a legitimate gain, is it not? Share structure, that's right, they didn't have anything brought over here yet. I went and did a Google search, tried to put my finger on it. Best I could find, outstanding share count is roughly 19 to 20 million, and the float is somewhere between 11 and 17 million. So it's not a bad float, not bad at all. Financials. Well, they didn't get kicked off because they weren't making any money. Uh, they did just about $700,000. Again, bring down those three zeros. And they spent $378,000 for it. So they got to keep uh, just a little under half of what they make, which isn't bad at all. Now, there is a disclosure I want to show you. But I also want to show you that this was backed up by news right here on June 2nd. New York Stock Exchange to suspend trading immediately in Jangman Education and commence delisting proceedings. Boy, it happened quick, didn't it? This was on the 2nd, and today is the 7th. So let's jump over to that disclosure. The disclosure came out one day after that did, so it is a little late. But now is when they're on the OTC. They just got here. So this tells us, let me jump in there. This is the form. 6K, you can see they are from the People's Republic of China. That's where their company is actually from. And they tell us here that New York Stock Exchange made a decision to delist this company because they could not keep up their global market capitalization of at least $15 million for 30 days straight. Now, of course, you get your price up on your stock, you get your market cap up. So the two are going hand in hand. But rather than say your price of your stock was too low, they uh, tell us that the market cap was too low. Has to be at least $15 million. And do they have the market cap on this yet? Let's come over here and see what they tell us. Uh, no, see, market cap would be right there. So we know they're under $15 million, which is not cutting it on the New York Stock Exchange. And they didn't come down to the QX, the best. No, they didn't come down to the QB. No, they came down to the pink. However, I do want to point out here, this delisting and transition to the OTC markets will not change the company's obligation to file annual reports and certain other reports with the SEC. Now, I'm going to presume they're going to continue being transparent and auditing their financials. Most pinks don't. It costs money, and pinks are startup companies and normally don't have that kind of money laying around. So they just give us numbers and we take their word for it. But audited, that's a whole different story. So I'm presuming that Zhangmin Education will continue auditing their records even though they're a pink. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. I want to see how high she actually did get today. Well, as I said, it's a unique stock. We've actually got to look at two separate charts to look at this because it has two separate tickers. When it was on the New York Stock Exchange, its ticker was ZME, and that is where we get our six-month, four-hour chart. But under the ticker ZMENY, its new OTC designation, there's only two days of chart, and they are separate charts, so that's the way we got to look at them. So let's take a look at the first one, ZME, while she was on the New York Stock Exchange. She had a huge, giant surge here. I haven't got a clue why. I did go see if I could see anything on the OTC news that they've got listed there, but this is back in December and the news didn't go that far. But what a jump. This went from just over a dollar to over eight dollars. So you're looking at seven to eight hundred percent gains there. Incredible. I'd like to know what that was about. 
but she has been under the 200 all the rest of the time. And if you take this away and just nullify it, she was down here at a dollar four and her low is at 55 cents. So she has fallen about 40% to get here. And well, I can't actually look at the last couple of days because they're not here. But let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, she was under the 50, broke the 50, trying to get near that 200, didn't have enough to make it, fell down again, crushed the 50 again, and started to fall towards it. But again, this is not the last day. This is not today. This is June 1st. So there's no reason to go down to the five day, five minute chart. Let's just open up this other chart, and all we got are two days. That's all we got for this new ticker, Z-M-E-N-Y. She came on the board at about 20 cents. 20 cents is where she was when she came on the OTC. In the first uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, she went 100%. Sure did, went from 20 cents to 40 cents, just like that. Gave away about half of it, took it back, and is just basically sitting up there right now. Here comes the 20-day SMA on the new chart, and she's about to bump into it. Now, I do see a lot of times the 20 has a lot of influence, so this could actually push this stock up again. But what this stock needs is some DD. Obviously, something's wrong with it if it couldn't get its investors to support it while it was on the New York Stock Exchange. Why did it go up today? Well, I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to say it's the new kid on the block. They were on the New York Stock Exchange. They have fallen down to the OTC. We're our own investors down here in the OTC market. And we see this new fish, and it's super cheap. And maybe some people think that it's worth a lot more because it was on the New York Stock Exchange. It is well undervalued, and this would be a good entry price regardless of what market it's on. It is still the same business. But of course, more DD is going to be the ticket. Now, if you were with me yesterday, you remember me talking about this stock, ticker INND. This is Interscope Hearing Technologies. Now, this is a hearing aid company, not your everyday old-fashioned hearing aid company. No, this company works with the cloud, artificial intelligence. I mean, they've got some new fancy products, and they sell them through big box stores. As a matter of fact, it was yesterday that they reported a $10 million purchase from Walmart for 15,000 of their stores. So the stock took off yesterday. Well, today it's taken off again. We're at 57% gains. And the news, not catalytic. Not in my opinion. Matter of fact, there's a lot of people actually posting the exact same news right now. And I doubt they're getting 57% gain. So she could be running on the Walmart purchase still. Now, I'll explain why I think the news today shouldn't have it moving. At least not today. What was the relative volume around that news? Getting bigger. Look, today uh, we did 200 million. Yesterday we did 171 million. She normally does 17 million. She's getting more and more buying volume every day. We could see a trend being created here right now. Share structure, uh-oh, I remember this. Yep, 6.1 billion shares, folks. Nothing to talk about except to say it isn't really slowing down the gains, is it? So let's not get too concerned about it. Financials, yeah, they're making money and they get to keep about two-thirds of everything they make. So they're not doing too bad at all. Disclosures, we're not going to worry too much about that. So let's just jump over to that news. And we really don't even actually read the news. All we got to do is read the headline. This came out today, Interscope Hearing Technologies CEO to present at the Emerging Growth Conference on June 8, 2022. Right? That's not catalytic news. There's probably 20 or 30 companies going to be at the Emerging Growth Conference. They're all posting this exact same piece of news. Now, I do expect this to cause a slight surge, not because of the news itself, but after June 8th, if the CEO presents this properly to the investors uh, in a few days, maybe Friday on payday when people get their money, they're going to buy shares of the stock if they're excited, but not today. So I honestly have no idea why that is running. I can only make presumptions 
that it has more to do with Walmart because that is for tomorrow, June 8th. So I would expect in a couple days, the 9th, the 10th, the 13th, to see some new shares of this stock being sold if the CEO does his job properly. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see if we see a new trend starting here. This is a lot like deja vu to me. This is ticker INND, six-month, four-hour chart. We got that high bubble back here when she had that radical surge of volume. Can't remember what this was for. Not sure if I knew. But she jumped 250% to hit 0 0.024. And then she has fallen all the way down here to double zero two. That is over a 1,000% difference between the two. And you can definitely see we have a change in trend going on right now. Not only, but it is getting stronger. Look at those technicals, folks. This looks like a raging forest fire in the desert on a dry day. Definitely cooking. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was doing hardly nothing, just hanging around the 50. Then when the 200 got close, she pounced on it and has been running ever since in caning speed. Volume is getting stronger. Technical still looks strong, but we do have a pullback right there after market hours, as a matter of fact. Let's come in and take a look at that. Five day, five minute. So there was your jump for the $10 million Walmart purchase. And there's your jump for the announcement of the conference tomorrow. Really? I don't know, folks. I honestly don't know. But that is a huge, giant jump. She went from 0048 to 0079. That's over 60% jump right there. Though she did give away a lot. Although, if we do our top and bottom and split the center to see, she's well over her 50% gains. This looks very strong. And if we come in and look close, if you look at this bar right there, you can see she is bouncing on this orange 20-day SMA. Then she bounced on it again right there. She argued with it here and is arguing with it again. This looks like the strong SMA. So I would watch what happens here. If she dips below the 20, she may come down lower. However, this has been showing a lot of strong buying volume. So I would keep my eye on INND. She hasn't been slack. Well, how about that? Four for the price of three. You like it? And did you notice what these stocks were running for? One got delisted. Yes, and it ran today. Another one, somebody else made an investment in a stock getting free warrants, and they paid cheaper for the stock than it was actually going for on the market. And still, the price went up. There's lots of reasons a stock will run, and we don't have to understand them. If you see heat, if you see that volume, and that price is rising, it really doesn't matter why it's rising. It's giving money away. All you got to do is get into it. Read those charts and get out before it starts taking the money from you. There's lots of information out there, folks. Don't ignore the technicals. They have a lot to do with the money we make. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.